Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Today we're going to take a look at a pretty extensive Orboros army. This is easily 100 points. It's one of the larger Orboros collections we've done. And as you can see, the figures are pretty crowded on here. I am going to attempt to actually use this higher definition camera and really show you some of these figures and what's really cool about them. So here we've got a Warp Wolf Stalker, and this is just traditional Orboros colors. Uh, on all the bases, we've done uh, some very delicate corking, and good corking isn't just cork slapped on there at, uh, you know, flat. You gotta actually work that cork a, a little bit. Um, you know, rough it up, and in fact, here, let's take a look. Let's take a look at another one. This guy here. And you know, make it make it kind of subtle. And we've added we had some bases left over from this other set. Let me see if I can find one that's that's really good. Uh, okay, here you go. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There we go. So I'm pretty sure this base set was from Cyborg, and it has all this Celtic knot stuff on it right there. And it just, when it was broken up, it just looks so good on these bases. It really makes me happy. Let me see if I can just find, if I can just find one more. Oh, here you go. Here's on this Overseer. I'm pretty sure that's what this guy is called. So a lot of that base work was cut up out of these other resin pieces. And we've also put on like logs and fallen forest stuff. Now... It's tough. Uh, these were painted by Veronica, 2Ks, remember? And when she does her higher end base work, let me tell you guys, there is, there is like three to five colors on all those stones. And in fact, let's, let's take a look at some of the stone creatures. Uh, and in fact, all the stone has this uh, same pretty wonderful treatment on it. So here's a wooled guardian. I'm pretty sure that's what this is called. Let's see if I'm in focus here. Let's try and see if I can get that. And he has like a fallen log on his base and all the bases have those details on them. But if you look at the stone, you'll see that there's, uh, there's three and sometimes more different uh, sorts of stippling and like aging effects on it. And she's done it heavier on the undersides as well. And I think uh, I think it ends up it ends up looking really good. It's a very convincing stone. Like you don't want stone just to be just to be gray. Oh, I don't know what this guy's name, but that that is that is like a really cool figure. This this guy's this guy's not messing around. Ah, let's see if I can lift that up. There you go. I hope you took your motion sickness pills, guys. So anyway, let's talk about the cloaks. So the cloaks have a lot of variation in them. The client actually asked for, um, let, me, let me get the druids out, for the druids to have different shades of cloaks on each one. And I think the artist has done a pretty good job of not making them, you know, it's very different, uh, but, but th there's, there's subtle differences between the cloaks, making each guy kind of uh, unique, like you can see between those two cloaks there. Now let's take a look at Morvana. Um, client's got this great epic Morvana here. Let me bring her down. Uh, we did a really built up, very detailed base on this one. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, it, the, it comes with something, so we had to kind of make that match, meaning the model already has, I'm pretty sure has this piece in there, like a little metal thing. So let's turn her around. And again, I've got to adjust this camera. Here we go. All right, guys, I long for the day when this will be better. Okay, so, yeah, so th there's a lot of subtlety on the rock, and rock isn't just gray. You know, like trees, if you look at trees, they're really not brown like a kindergartner's uh, picture. They actually have a lot going on. So Morvana's cloak has quite a bit of variation here. The center cloak goes down to like a teal and it highlights all the way up to, you know, this lime green and uh, highlighted, in fact. So, and I love the Ibex here, the way the artist has made it kind of have this zebra pattern on it, which I think is a, is a real bonus. So anyway, all right, well, let's just go through because my time could run out any second. 
um, and we'll just we'll just make a scan of these of these other pieces here. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. We've got a megalith way back there. Let's see, can we focus on him? Nope, we sure can't. All right, well, anyway, well, I really sort of got these guys totally in a disarray. You got mannequins and a sentry stone, a wold weird, which I showed you. Let's turn this guy around. He looks kind of weird. I think this guy's called a wayfarer. Could be wrong. Pretty sure there's two of those. Now, um, in War Machine and Hordes, you got to have 180 degree markings. And in this case, uh, the artist picked this, uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a gray, it's like a military gray. And so it's not black um, and it's it's very subtle. Like it, it mixes in, it, it complements well with the rest of the model. And I think that's, in fact, let's bring this megalith up. You can see it better on him. Whoops. Uh, we do as a standard matte coat things twice. So they have quite a bit of durability. So anyway, um, so this megalith, oh yeah, so some people like lines, but what I'm seeing more often these days is that the whole front is done a different color. And this, guys, this can go terribly, terribly wrong and just look awful on the board. Uh, but, you know, War Machine players are pretty mechanical with their stuff. Hey, so let's go down here to this ruined village and look at our uh, skinwalkers. In fact, let me clear some of this other stuff out of the way. There you go. This is going to all get packed up tomorrow. So anyway, uh, what we did to make these guys unique is we put, um, we put, uh, my gosh, Roman numerals on their backs, but they're also each a unique color of fur on them. Subtle, like if, if you're not looking for it, it just looks like they, they kind of fit together and the eye isn't really drawn to it, but it's definitely there. And so, well, anyway, oh, and you have this uh, Warp Born Alpha. This model is incredible. I just love it. In fact, you've got, you, you, can, you can miss it. You can miss it pretty easily. Um, hold on, let me see if I can get a good focus on him. So there you go. So uh, there you go. That cloak is just really, really cool. And so, guys, we've got some good basing. Uh, with the standard for painting is one level above tabletop uh, for this one and um, you know I just I'm just really I'm really pleased with a lot of the stuff that's coming out of the studio nowadays if you'd like something done contact me at projects at bluetablepainting.com uh, I'm ready to make super deals this month as we are waiting for the advent of Warhammer 40k 8th edition with bated breath. So guys, thanks for tuning in and I hope you got your inspiration for the day.